Your forecast first. <laughs> Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Look at the area roads. Roofing dog on a Rapture weather camera. That's Neil. That's green. You can see the tire tracks there. They've done a pretty good job of trying to clear the roads off. Let's look at some of the area interstates. That's I-74. That is near Muhammad at the exit there. And you can see here along I-57 at Curtis Road, I-57 at Market, and I-74 at Cunningham. You can see the highways there, but there are still slick spots. It is still very cold, and we've still got a very moderate to heavy band. Look at this here. Running from near Cerro Gordo to Tolono right now as the snow is coming down. Cold, 18. Turn that into two. That's what it feels like outside. So if you're going out and about this evening, still be careful as the snow continues to fly. We'll talk about how tonight is not the only night we see snow and how the temperatures get even colder coming up. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. It's an emergency notification system no one could access. How the people in one county can be once again alerted. Plus, several homes, cars, and an apartment building were damaged where police were left collecting dozens of shell casings. Also tonight, state lawmakers rolled up their sleeves today. Why not everyone is happy they got a vaccine. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. The only problem with when you have one person in control of a very important situation. If that person is gone, you're in trouble. And that's exactly what happened in Pyatt County. Good evening, I'm Paul Chikini. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. The county got an emergency notification system last year, but they ran into a problem when the person in charge was no longer around. WCI3's Jamie Mays live in our newsroom. So Jamie, they haven't had access to this for months. That's right, Jennifer, but the sheriff says as of this morning, they were able to access the passcodes. They're looking forward to using that system to better protect the community. Last year, Pyatt County got a new mass notification system from a company called HyperReach. It sends out to um, anybody who opts into it. Um, it you go online, register your information. You can tell, you, you can tell what you want to get from it, whether uh, text, call, it even does an Alexa notification. That tries to get the word out to protect yourself, stay away from certain areas where there might be either disasters, uh, chemical uh, spills, um, tornadoes coming, things of that nature. The system was a lot like the one at U of I's campus, where students are notified if they need to be on alert, but the county wasn't able to access it. Our former EMA director who had um, gone out on FMLA leave um, was the only one who had access to it. So that left us in a very precarious situation. If we needed to get a, um, a message, an emergency message out to the citizens who have already signed up for it, uh, we didn't have access to that. The system, which was meant to make the community safer, wasn't able to be accessed. But the Pike County Sheriff says the problem has recently been solved. We have since got control of the uh, passcodes and we've turned it over as the primary. I'm in process of working with HyperReach to tailor everything to, uh, to what we need as a county to move forward with this, this notification system. And it's going to make a big difference in improving communication. Working from a county that had this, this system, um, it, was, it was a very good system to have for the safety of the community. The county board member I spoke to said they're still learning the process and they hope they'll be able to have people start to sign up soon. Live in the newsroom, Jamie Mays, WCIE 3, your local news leader. <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much. Now, Champaign County's NOAA Weather Radio Tower still offline. It has been that way since last year. The tower is based in Champaign and serves nine counties. It gives forecasts and severe weather notifications. Until it is working, you can always go to the weather, WCIE 3 weather app for weather alerts. Decatur police are investigating after gunfire hit several homes and cars. It happened Tuesday morning near Ravinia Park Road and North Longwood Drive. WCI3's Jen Lask is live in Decatur. And Jen, what is shocking about this is just how many shell casings were found. Absolutely, Jennifer. Police found more than 30 shell casings at the scene. Now, they say that they had been called out to investigate around 9.30 yesterday morning. That was about five hours after the shots were fired. Now, witnesses say one of the suspects showed up in a dark-colored car. The suspect was described as being very skinny, but that's all police have to go off of so far. No one was hurt. 
Police later learned another apartment building and a car a few blocks away were also hit by bullets. They say it might be from the same shots fired incident. However, they're still investigating. It's too early to say for sure on that. Now, if you have any information, Decatur police are urging you to give them a call. Live in Decatur, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Jen, thank you. In other news, officials with the Il VA Ileana Healthcare System said they're not scheduling COVID-19 vaccination appointments for veterans who are 65 and older. Those eligible can call the VA to schedule an appointment at either the main facility in Danville or their other outpatient clinics. We have a link to all that info on our website, WCIA.com. Almost 63,000 doses were given out across the state yesterday. The seven-day rolling average now over 55,000. Illinois is on track to administer one and a half million doses by tomorrow. We reported last week Governor Pritzker moved state lawmakers ahead in that vaccine line. And today, several got their first shot in the arm. Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell is live in Springfield tonight. Mark, the state set up a special place for them to get the vaccine. Paul, state lawmakers didn't just get to move up in that line for the first dose of the vaccine. They also didn't have to wait in the actual line to register at their local county health department or online at CVS or Walgreens. They got a special pop-up clinic set up for them. The Pritzker administration has a secure location off-site here in Springfield. Uh, we went there today. We were told we could not access that building. Of course, this comes at a time when so many people in the public are frustrated with a slow and cumbersome, uh, cumbersome rollout for these vaccines that are in short supply. House Democrat Sue Shearer wouldn't tell me if she got the vaccine. She cited the federal uh, health care privacy laws, uh, but she did say she and several others said Politicians need the vaccine to get back to work safely. But the argument for it is so that we can come in here and do the people's work. Making sure that legislators are vaccinated, it helps us to get back to work for the people in Illinois. Anything that can get us back to work, to focusing on those problems, I, I think it's worth it. If this is, you know, the operations of the state of Illinois, then this is a group that probably should have some ability to get a vaccine. Some Republicans and Democrats were for it. Many others were against it. Governor Pritzker said he himself will wait his turn in line to wait for later. But at, on the same day, news from Governor Pritzker's office, he is expanding this phase we're in now yet again. Phase 1B will now include people with those severe medical conditions, underlying conditions like cancer, heart or lung conditions. Those people who, if they catch COVID-19, face a severe risk of, uh, of death they will now be able to start getting their first doses of the vaccine about two weeks from now on February 25th. Also tonight, one update to a story we've been covering uh, recently. I'm told that the Swan Special Care Facility in Champaign that has uh, more than 100 people living in long-term care there, many on breathing tubes, they got their first doses of the vaccine today. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell, WCI 3, your local news leader. Some good vaccine news. Mark, thanks. It's one of the most at-risk places during this pandemic, how nursing homes are still waiting to bring family members back in, and also tonight. This campaign is just about casting positive images. They're posting pictures to empower girls of color with the Champaign School District and MTD are joining forces to display. Let's go have a snowball fight. What do you say? Can I put on my boots? Nah, do it in your heels. <laughs> Uh -oh. It's going to snowball fight outside. Oh, you can't see that. Here, take come over here. No, <laughs> too cold. <laughs> too cold. Too cold. Uh, it is coming down, though. Take a look here. Uh, that is our roofing dog and our ratchet weather camera. You can see the snow that is just flying as uh, vehicles make their way on South Neal Street there tonight. And roads, depending upon where you are, they're really good for some, not so good for others. We'll talk about all of it next.